welcome to this time of worshiping together. During these times of uncertainty, COVID is still raging on, and it has affected my family, or some of them have COVID symptoms, and thus I am doing the videoing today from my home. So we welcome you to this time of worshiping, of celebrating together, and friends, where whatever has happened in your life this week, know that God is with you and is offering you peace, rest, and blessing. So welcome to this place of sanctuary. Let us join our voices together in the call to worship. In the midst of our daily living, it is difficult to see your holy presence in our lives. As you did it with the disciples, take us to the place where we can know who you are. Separate from one another, call us together into your light and life of hope and joy. Enable us to see your glory, Jesus. Encountering your grace as we celebrate your holy name together. Now let us unite our voices in the opening prayer. Let us pray. God of light and truth, you are beyond our grasp or conceiving. Before the brightness of your presence, the angels veil their faces. With lowly reverence and adoring love, we acclaim your glory and singing your praise. For you have shown us your truth and love in Jesus Christ our Savior. Help us to see him more clearly as we gather in his name and through him to find our way to living faithfully as your children. Amen. Our first hymn is taken from Voices United, 589, Lord, Speak to Me.
Good morning. Today's scripture reading is found in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 to 36, the story of the transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. The Word of God. The reflection for this morning is titled Faded Glory. And there's a story that is told about a man who took his hunting dog on a trial run one day. After a while, he managed to shoot a duck and it fell into the lake. And he instructed his dog to go and fetch the duck. Well, the dog immediately sprinted out but he didn't swim. He walked on water and picked up the duck and brought it back to his master. The man was stunned. He didn't know what to make of it. He shot another duck, and again it fell into the lake, and again instructed the dog to go and fetch it, and the dog walked on water and brought it back. Hardly daring to believe his eyes, and not wanting to be thought as a total fool, he told no one about it. But the next day he called his neighbor to come and to go hunting with him. As on the previous day, the man shot a duck and it fell in the lake and he instructed his dog to go and fetch and the dog walked on water and got it and brought it back to him. His neighbor didn't say a word. Several more ducks were shot that day, and each time the dog walked on water to fetch them and brought them back. And his neighbor said absolutely nothing, and neither did the dog owner. Finally, the dog owner, unable to contain himself any longer, asked his neighbor, Did you notice anything strange about my dog? Yes, replied the neighbor, rubbing his chin and thinking a bit. Come to think of it, I did. I noticed your dog can't swim. The story of transfiguration of Jesus is difficult to talk about and to explain. And like the duck hunter's friend, we too scratch our chins and cast it off as something else that has caused the event or memory of the glory of that moment to fade away. Not too long ago, I was looking at purchasing a new pair of jeans. So I went to Amazon because I couldn't go to the store. Amazon has a a wide selection of brands to choose from. One of those brands was called Faded Glory. Not a very positive name for a pair of jeans. Faded has such a negative connotation, does it not? Before I retired, a number of my colleagues and I would joke about retiring, saying such things, producing these kinds of images as riding into the sunset, relaxing over coffee instead of coffee on the go, wearing the same clothes for a few days, pension plans and so forth, 
all suggesting that as a senior, that my glory days were quickly fading. This past Sunday was the close of the Winter of Olympics in Beijing. Those glorious moments of record records being broken by athletes and the winning of the medals for their sport will soon fade <clears throat> along with their names as the world refocuses their, its attention on other matters. A faded, glorious moment is shared with us by Luke. The three disciples certainly witnessed something on that mountaintop with Jesus. How it was described was to reflect God's glory, but over time it has faded in its significance to become viewed as, un, as an unbelievable story. We brush it aside, like the hunter in the dog story, because we just do not know what to make of it or how to explain it. Instead, we call it something else that is more conventional and accepting so others can understand what we are describing. The result is that the experience becomes like a pair of faded jeans that had their glorious days being worn, only now to be put on when there's a job to be done around the house when one doesn't care what happens to them. The experience that the disciples had is told in Matthew, Mark, and only alluded to <clears throat> in John. But it indicates <clears throat> that it was a significant moment for them. It gripped them, <clears throat> and without fully understanding it, they knew that they had witnessed the glory of God that day. These moments of God's glory are found through the Hebrew writings as well. Think of Moses. Moses experienced God's glory on Mount Sinai when he came down from the mount with the second set of the tablets of the commandments. It says that his face shone with God's glory, and those who witnessed it became afraid. They were so afraid that they had to put a veil over Moses' face in order for him to instruct the people. But in time, the veil became unnecessary because the glory of God had faded. Moses and the disciples on the mountain had their lives altered. The disciples wanted to stay and to live in that glorious experience. Their lives were transformed by it because they saw a glimpse of the presence of God. What did Jesus do after the experience? He forced them back into the world where over time that transformational glory began to transform those around them. Jesus' insistence prevented the experience from becoming immortalized in structure, preventing it from being fluid in time and space. But the disciples wanted to build something to remember the event by, to come back to when it was needed. But Jesus refused this from happening. Even though he knew that their experience would fade over time, it would make it difficult for them to experience the glory of God in moments to come. Their experience would fade, but every time they heard Jesus say, Go, you are healed, 
or your sins are forgiven, or come and I will give you rest, it allowed for God's glory to be seen again, enabling their faded glory experience to burn a little brighter. On that day, they were awakened to see God's transformational presence that resonated in and through Jesus for all eternity. They could no longer look at Jesus in the same old light. Through the Christmas and Epiphany season that we have journeyed through, we have been given glimpses of God's glory. Those moments have been pushing through those cracks of the scriptures shared with us and our faith over these past few weeks, revealing God's presence and glory in creation through Christ. And so all of us have experienced God's glory in some way. A moment of holiness, of awesomeness, a quiet moment that was filled with such profound feeling that it touched the very core of one's being. We may experience it and describe it differently, but when they do happen, they are bright, memorable, and life-altering, helping us in our life's journey. What is more profound is that these moments of God's glory shine through the darkest periods of our human journey, giving us resilience, hope, and strength to move forward to share God's presence with others. I uplifted, I have a dream that was written by Martin Luther King Jr. last week. But every time I read the portion of King's August 1963 address, I have a dream. I feel the intensity of God's glory pouring through those words, engaging people to change, to make a difference, to make a more just and caring world. Unfortunately, Christianity and many congregations want to live in that faded glory of the past that you and I know all too well. We remember the church's glory days in the mid-20th century after World War II. Churches were packed. In the United Church, a new church was being built almost every week as neighborhoods grew. Churches were full. Sunday school population and some church communities were in the hundreds. It just seemed all that one had to do was to build a church and the people would come. God's glory was shining brightly across the land during those days. But social sociologists ask the question why? Was it because of God's glory or were the reasons for people attending church were to seek answers to help them make sense of what they had gone through during World War II, and for the church to make society right again through its morals and values. The church basked in its glory for those few decades. Unfortunately, with each passing year, that glory containing the presence of God has faded. For many, it seems like to be a, a glowing amber now. But let us not become discouraged. The passage from Luke holds a profound clue for us to mind. After the experience, Jesus turns and leads them to, to, to Jerusalem, where he knew his life would end. Jesus could have stayed on the mount with the disciples 
Instead, the glory of God moved them off the mountain. It was not to be used for their personal use. It challenged them in their ministry and what they shared with others. They discovered over time that the glory of God was meant to be shared. How? Through the words that the disciples heard on the mount that day. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. The clue, listen to him. Our understanding or experience of God's glory in our lives will fade too, as it did with the disciples. But it will never leave us. We may no longer recall the intense experience of God's presence or glory or feeling that surrounded you or I, but the glory of God resonates through the Word, guiding individuals and congregations like this one to meet the challenges as to how a faith community can push back the veil of life to reveal God's glory through the most mundane circumstances in life to become powerful acts <clears throat> on the face of the planet. <clears throat> if we listen, we will discover how to help reveal God's presence. Listen. As Christ says, to love one another. Those who are last shall be first. Give freely to others. Forgive one another. Look at the marginalized by feeding them, clothing them, housing them, healing them, being with them. You see, if we listen carefully, the glory of God shines through those words. And so scripture is full of the ways to let God's glory shine. Often God's glory has faded because we hear these words as we are instructed to live them out. But we do not make them our goals. We do not live out what Jesus would have us do. Yet even if our glory of God has become faded and worn by time, God pours into those moments, making life real, meaningful, and full of hope for others and for you. Over time, this congregation has been transformed by moments of God's glory into something new. We will always live in the faded glory that reminds us of the Creator's glory that enables faith communities to face the most difficult situations in the community. Even as you grow into a new beginning without Young's Point United Church, you are called to move forward in a new way. Like the disciples who were uncertain by what they had experienced. The conversations they must have had amongst themselves to understand how to prepare them for the outcomes of ministry that lay ahead of them. They were drawn back to that moment of standing in God's glory. Drawn back to remember the voice saying, listen to him. That help keep them on the path where they would eventually see the Creator's glory in their faith at work. Our faded moments of God's presence in our lives are where God's glory burst into them 
giving us strength to meet the changes of the present, of the past, and the challenges that will continue to come. It is not easy to hold on to faded glory, but we have witnessed individually as a faith community that God's presence is all around us. His glory is always there. And so we are asked to listen and to be open to that spirit who will remind us of Jesus, this way of showing us God's glory, as you reveal the presence of God to those around you through your love. As Lakefield continues to find its new pathway of ministry, God's transformational love will be present in all that you experience, revealing that same glory that never fades as the disciples witnessed. Even if our glory of God, our personal glory of God fades, God will sh continue to shine through it, transforming hope into reality. So do not be discouraged. We are called and invited to trust in that our faded glory, and to go with purpose and with confidence that we too are called to live in and to reveal God's presence in our daily living, sharing God's glory as a disciple of Christ. Let us go with that in mind. Let us go with that purpose let us go in peace. Amen. Our next hymn is from More Voices, 150. Spirit God, be our breath. I invite you to join me in, in the prayers of the people. 
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Creator, it is with gratitude that we come into your holy presence to be surrounded with your warmth of acceptance and love. As our eyes meet the horizon, we see the pain and suffering that scorches the earth, the very vessel you made with your glory has become a shadow of what it once was by our hands. In these moments of prayerful hope, the world waits for a word of peace. We do not understand the complexities that surround the unsettled reasons for potential war, but we know the effects of it. No one wins, and there is a price to be paid for war. If it is announced between Ukraine and Russia, continue to work through the channels where peace will become the commitment of both parties. As we listen, <clears throat> as we listen to the cries of the injustices inflicted upon others, the trail of the officers who killed, the trial of the officers who killed George Floyd, and other such incidents, let justice be given with mercy. In the Florida sex trafficking ring discovered free those from such such a predators, giving support and care to the abused who are living in such conditions. For communities that live under cultural racism and hatred, help your people by setting them free from the tyranny of these acts. Holy One. In these places that we have mentioned and others, breathe into them your holy presence where freedom and compassion becomes your healing way. Hear our prayer for the brokenness that we have heard and experienced in our communities. And let your healing spirit be present in these circumstances. Your glorious planet is under threat by the very creatures that you have created. Creator, help us to see your glory in what you have created to turn our attention toward healing the very sources of life that give us life. In our daily living, remind us of what we are doing and how our lives are impacting the planet and others, as we live with much and others who have so little. Let your spirit encourage us to make the choices that support the health of our, envi of our environment over profit and self-gain. Enable your global family to respond to the planet whose life is not only fading, but whose mysteries are being destroyed. Holy One, hear our prayers for our home that we live on. And with your grace, help us to bring healing to this planet. Our lives, Holy One, are so intertwined with one another. What we do to one strand of the web of life affects the whole web of life. 
We feel this as those closest to us are facing life issues, friends who are grieving after loss, a broken relationship, fear of illness, the shadows of loneliness. Let your loving and caring spirit bear them up to face the days ahead of them. For family members whom we love and hope for their mental and physical and emotional health, may they carry their pain, that carry their pain with them daily. Let your comforting spirit speak Christ's words to them. Come. Come to me and I will offer you rest and peace. Come and let me hold you. Let those words penetrate us, that we become the arms of Christ, the comforting spirit that others need. So hear our prayers for our friends and our families. And in your love, help us to be help us to be their strength. We pray for this congregation as it seeks a way to forward in the uncertain times. Healing for Carrie and for the brokenness experienced through the separation from a relationship with Young's Point United Church and the many feelings associated with it. Enable us to feel your healing grace in these moments of uncertainty, hurts, and what-ifs. Hear our prayers for both congregations. Enable us, Holy One, to find the pathways to state our hurts and our concerns for one another. We come, sometimes unable to voice the deep feelings we harbor, the sorrows, the hurts that we have caused, the decisions we have made for personal benefit and more. We share them and the many other wounds that need healing, hear our prayers. In Christ's name we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In our lives, we give freely, and in our gifts, they touch other lives, bringing forth hope and assurance, bringing forth care and, and love. And so we give you thanks for the gifts that you have shared with Lakefield United Church and your continued support in the ways that you do this. And so enable us Lord, to give these offerings with a sense of the sacredness and dignity which befit their appointed purpose to serve in love and in justice. Amen. And as we go our way from celebrating together, may the Lord bless you 
and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the countenance of the Lord be upon you, giving you peace and hope. Let us go with and in the peace of the Holy Spirit. Amen.